Good morning dear students. Today in our chemical thermodynamics we will discuss the following topics in detail. We will start our lecture from thermodynamic process then we will discuss reversible and irreversible processes and their differences. Uh, then we will uh, discuss also heat and work and their sign conventions. And uh, finally, we will discuss uh, our practical that is to determine the refractive index of liquid by AB's refractometer. First of all, uh, we will start with our first topic that is thermodynamic process. First, we need to know what is a process. A process is one when a system changes from one state to another. When a system changes from initial state to a final state, then the thermodynamics properties may change. What are the thermodynamic properties? Thermodynamic properties contain temperature, volume, pressure, etc. Basically, we have uh, five types of thermodynamic processes starting from isothermal processes, and then we have uh, adiabatic process, uh, isobaric process, and the second last is uh, isochoric process and the last one is cyclic process. Now we will discuss all these processes one by one. First of all, isothermal process. A process in which temperature remains fixed is called isothermal process as iso means same and therm means temperature. So all these processes which are taking place at fixed temperature then uh, this process or all these processes are called isothermal process for example for example uh, as a process taking place in a thermostat thermostat is a constant temperature but when a process is taking place at a thermostat then this process is called an isothermal process for an, for an isothermal process mathematically uh, we can represent dt that is change in temperature equals to zero now, an adiabatic process, a process in which no heat can flow into or out of the system. So this process in which no heat can flow into or out of the system is called an adiabatic process. An adiabatic condition is only possible in an insulated container. Uh, example of insulated container is a thermos bottle. As you know that in thermos, no heat can flow into or outside of the system. High vacuum and highly polished surfaces helps to achieve thermal insulation. For adiabatic processes, change in heat that is dq equals to zero. Isobaric process is a process in which which takes place at constant pressure. Uh, for instant heating of liquid water to its boiling point and its vaporization takes place at the same atmospheric pressure that is one atmosphere or 760 torr. So uh, the heating of liquid water is an example of isobaric process at uh, the same atmospheric pressure. For an isobaric process dp equals to zero. Now comes to isochoric process, a process in which volume remains constant is called isochoric process. For example, when you heat a substance in a non-expanding chamber, uh, then change in volume is uh, zero. So there is no change in volume. So uh, this process is called an isochoric process where volume remains constant. For an isochoric process, mathematically, the change in volume dV equals to zero. So all these processes in which volume remains constant is called an isochoric process. Uh, now comes to the cyclic process when a system goes through a number of different processes and finally returns to its initial state then this process is called a cyclic process for example a system is first goes through an adiabatic process then it goes to isothermal process and then finally goes to uh, goes through an isobaric process and returns to its uh, 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 to its initial point then this process is called a cyclic one for a cyclic process, change in energy is zero and change in heat that is dH equals to zero. This, these are the graphical representation of all the five processes. Processes in the left hand figure, uh, we represent the four processes uh, for isobaric process in pressure volume uh, graph. Uh, we, for isobaric process, we got a straight line as pressure is constant over here. 
uh, for isochoric process we also got a straight line a downward sloping downward sloping straight line as the volume is constant so in isobaric and isochoric process we got a straight line due to constant pressure and constant volume however in adiabatic process and isothermal process we got an isotherm which represents uh, the process is taking place at constant temperature uh, and constant heat for a cyclic process for example this is our initial point we got a triangle in a cyclic process for example this is our initial point first of all uh, our system is a system is having an adiabatic process then it goes through an isochoric process and then it, uh, it goes to the third stage that is isobaric process and then return to its initial point over here so when a system goes through a number of processes and then finally return back to its initial point then this process is called a cyclic one so uh, now we will discuss our next topic that is reversible and irreversible processes a reversible process is one which takes place slowly and its direction can be reversed by small change in the state of a system however an irreversible process grows from initial point to the final state in a single step as it is uh, at it takes place abruptly so it can't be reversed in irreversible case this is the diagrammatical representation of uh, reversible and irreversible process uh, the left hand figure represents the irreversible process uh, at the initial point uh, uh, the pressure on the piston and the pressure inside the gas is equal uh, but uh, when we reduce the pressure on the piston by a small amount dp then uh, the change in pressure at the intermediate point is p minus dp the gas slowly ex expanding and move upward uh, at uh, by the regular interval but the change in pressure is very negligible so it will maintain equilibrium at all the stages when it goes to the final position however in case of uh, irreversible process the gas expand from point p that is initial position to the final position p prime suddenly as it uh, as this process has taken place abruptly so this process the irreversible process can't be reversed now these are the differences between reversible and irreversible process reversible process are the slower process occurs in small step however irreversible process is a sudden process which can't be reversed reversible <coughs> reversible processes are imaginary however irreversible processes are ref, uh, are real that are performed actually reversible process maintain equilibrium at all stages of the operation however equilibrium in irreversible processes achieved at initial and final stage of the operation in reversible process changes can be reversed however in irreversible process the system did not return to its initial stage reversible processes are extremely slow however irreversible processes proceed at myable myable speed reversible processes work done by this process is greater than irreversible process however in irreversible processes work done by irreversible process is smaller than reversible process now uh, our next topic is the nature of heat and work done using in thermodynamics simply work done is defined as the product of force and distance covered mathematically work done is represented by work equals to force multiplied by di distance now we will discuss some of the units of work and uh, these various relationships in cgs system the work is the unit of work is erg which is defined as the work done when a resistance of 1 dyne is moved through a distance of 1 cm SI unit of work is joule which is nowadays used mathematically 1 joule equals to 10 raised power 7 ergs and 1 erg equals to 10 raised power minus 7 joule for larger quantity of work done kilojoule units are used 1 kilojoule equals to 1000 joule please uh, do remember these relationship as these are very important and they must be used in your numerical problem so please try to memorize these relationships now the units of heat uh, normally the heat is expressed in calories that is cal which is defined as the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree celsius 
SI unit of heat is Joule. Usually heat and work are interrelatable. So these relationship shows the interrelationship interrelation of work and heat. So one Joule equals to 0 0.239 CL calories and one calories equals to 4.184 Joule. Uh, however, one kilocalories equals to 4.184 kilojoules. So uh, uh, try to remember these relationships also for your future numerical problems. Now, uh, the, for the sign convention of heat, uh, uh, consider this is a thermodynamic system which is under thermodynamic study. When heat is absorbed from the surrounding to the system, then the sign of heat is positive. And when heat is given out by the system to the surrounding, then the sign of heat is negative. So when heat is absorbed, the sign of Q, Q is heat, then the sign of heat is positive. And when, when heat is given off by the system, then the sign of heat, that is Q, is negative. Sign convention for work is also very important. Just remember uh, these two points, that is work done on the system by surrounding is positive and work done by the system on the surround on the surrounding is negative uh, so work done on the system is always positive and work done by the system on the surrounding is always negative uh, you must also remember these sign conventions when uh, you are going to solve a uh, few numerical problems summary of sign convention is given as heat flows into the system Q is positive, however heat flows out of the system is negative. Uh, however, work done on the system is positive uh, and work done by the system is negative. Now, uh, this is our practical part, the last part of our uh, today's lecture, that is determination of a refractive index of, uh, index of a liquid by AB's refractometer. First we need to know the theory of refractive index that what is refractive index. Refractive index is basically a ratio of speed of light of vacuum to the speed of light in that material. C is the speed of light of vacuum and V is the speed of light in that material. So this is a ratio, it has uh, it is a dimensionless quantity. Uh, for We know that the refractive index of water is 1.33. It means that the light travels 1.33 times faster in vacuum than it does in water. Uh, this diagram pre pre represent that uh, the angle of incidence is uh, different than the angle of refraction uh, as it changes its path when it goes uh, through that liquid. The refractive index also determines how much light is bent or refracted when entering a material. When light moves from one medium to another, it changes its direction. When light changes its direction, then it is called a refracted light. Uh, if I is the angle of incidence of ray in vacuum and R is the angle of refraction, the angle of incidence, the refractive index N is defined as the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction. Mathematically, refractive index in this case is represented, represented as n equals to sine i divided by sine r. In this practical, uh, the apparatus for this practical is AB's refractometer. We, we also have temperature controller for that practical. We also using a light source and uh, we also having a sample whose refractive index has to be determined. Uh, we uh, we will follow these uh, nine steps to carry out our to carry out out our practical. First of all, we need to clean the surface of prism with alcohol and acetone using cotton and allow it to dry. In the second step, uh, use a dropper and put two to three drops of given liquid between the prism and close it together. In the third step, allow the light to fall on the mirror. In the fourth step, adjust the mirror to reflect maximum light into the prism box. In the fifth step, rotate the prism box by moving lever until the boundary between the shaded and bright parts appear in the field of view. In the sixth part, if a band of color appear in the light shade boundary, make it sharp by rotating the compensator. In the seventh step, uh, we need to adjust the lever so that the light shade boundary passes exactly through the center of crosswire. In the, in the eighth step, read the refractive index directly on the scale 
finally we will have to uh, we will be uh, take took three set of readings uh, by directly looking at the scale and then uh, took the average of refractive index to calculate the exact value and, uh, this is our observation table as we are uh, performing our uh, practical at our room temperature this is liquid one suppose we are using alcohol acetone and methanol and uh, these are the refractive index index we have to find over here you uh, you just need to write uh, the value of refractive index by just looking on the scale of the ab's refractometer uh, this represent the small n uh, if you asked to calculate uh, specific refraction and molar refraction then these are the formulas to calculate the specific refraction in that case you just uh, put the values of refractive index to calculate uh, the specific refraction however in molar refraction uh, you just uh, put the value of specific refraction r inside uh, the formula and uh, the molecular mass of the liquid can be easily calculated by adding up the atomic masses uh, so in that case we can we will be able to find uh, the refractive index of a liquid by this very easy approach in the last this is the video demonstration of uh, this practical you need to listen it very carefully फ्रेंड्स आज हम सीखेंगे कि एवेस इफेक्टोमीटर को कैसे यूज करेंगे तो ये आपके पास एक पूरा इंस्ट्रूमेंट है जिसको हम एवेस इफेक्टोमीटर बोल रहे हैं इसमें आप देख सकते हो इसमें एक दो प्रिज्म होती है ये आप देख पा रहे हो यहाँ पे इसके अंदर दो प्रिज्म हैं फर्स्ट वन दिस एंड सेकेंड वन इज दिस दो प्रिज्म लगे हुए हैं और इसके अंदर हमने किसी भी जिस सॉलवेंट की रिफेक्टिव इंडेक्स नज़र बनी होती है उसकी एक हम ड्रॉप रखते हैं ठीक है तो उस तरह से इसमें बहुत सारे लेंसेज लगे हुए हैं लेंसेज की हेल्प जो कि इसको एनालाइज करेगा और हमें बताएगा कि रिफ्लेक्शन किस तरह से हो रही है और यहाँ से आप रेडी ले सकते हैं तो चलो मैं आपको बताता हूँ कि कैसे इसमें सैंपल लोड करेंगे तो हमारे पास एक सॉलवेट का सैंपल है उसको हम ड्रॉपर की हेल्प से यहाँ पर एक ड्रॉप बना लेंगे इसके एक्सप्रीजन पर ड्रॉप बना लेंगे ड्रॉप लगाने के बाद हम क्या करेंगे इसको बंद कर देंगे अगर आप इसको देख पा रहे हो इसको हम कम्प्लीटली बंद करने के बाद इस तरह से टाइटली क्लोज कर देंगे इसको टाइटली क्लोज करना है ताकि इसके थ्रू एयर पास ना सके अब हमें क्या करना होता है मिरर इसमें एडजस्ट करना होता है यहाँ पे मिरर लगाया जाता है तो मिरर को एडजस्ट करेंगे और मिरर का काम जस्ट इतना ही है कि लाइट को रिफ्लेक्ट करके हमें मैक्सिमम लाइट फोकस करेगा ताकि हमें जो रिफ्लेक्शन है वो विजुअल हो सके उसको हमें इस तरह से एडजस्ट करना है एडजस्ट कर लेंगे अकॉर्डिंग टू ताकि हमारे जो हमें लाइट जो है वो इजीली विजुअल करवा सके रिफ्लेक्शन को फिर हम इसको यहाँ से एडजस्ट करते हैं और एडजस्ट करने के बाद हम लाइट की फोकस बना के इसको यहाँ से हम क्लिक करते हैं तो आपको मैं एक चीज़ बताना चाहूँगा इसमें आपको एक क्रॉस दिखता है अगर आप यहाँ से देख पा पाओगे जब आप यूज़ करोगे इसमें क्रॉस होगा हमने इसको इस तरह से एडजस्ट करना होता है ताकि जो डार्क पोर्शन है वो क्रॉस के ऊपर ऊपर रहे बिल्कुल मिड पोर्शन से क्रॉस के बिल्कुल ऊपर ऊपर आए और जो ब्राइट पोर्शन होगा वो क्रॉस से नीचे आना चाहिए इस तरह से जो क्रॉस लगा होगा इसका इसमें इसके अंदर उससे उसके बिल्कुल सेंटर से ऊपर ऊपर आपके डार्क फ्रिजेस आने चाहिए डार्क लाइन्स आनी चाहिए और नीचे जो रहेगा वो ब्राइट ब्राइट लाइन होगी ठीक है इस तरह से इसको एडजस्ट करने के बाद आपको इस पॉइंट पर आना है पहले सिंपली आपने यहाँ पर एडजस्ट कर लेना है ताकि आपको इसका डार्क और ब्राइट पोर्शन बिल्कुल क्रॉस के सेंटर पे लेके आना है उसके बाद आप यहाँ पे देखोगे तो इस पर आप फिर रीडिंग देख सकते हो और यहाँ से आप रीडिंग क्लिक कर लोगे तो आपको इसमें एक लाइन पे इस साइड आपको दिखेगा कि नंबरिंग चली हुई है उसके बाद इस तरफ जो होगा उस पर पॉइंट मतलब राइट हैंड साइड पे पॉइंट लगा के कुछ लिखा होगा और लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पर एक नंबरिंग चली होगी तो उस नंबरिंग के बाद आपने पॉइंट लगाना है और उसके बाद जो डिजिट दिए हुए हैं वो पॉइंट लगा के कुछ करें तो इस तरह से उसका जो यहाँ से जो वैल्यू आएगी वो उसका रिफ्लेक्टिव इंडेक्स रहेगा एक पर्टिकुलर सॉलवेंट का इस तरह से हम किसी भी पर्टिकुलर सॉलवेंट का रिफ्लेक्टिव इंडेक्स फाइंड आउट कर सकते हैं बाई यूजिंग एवे इफेक्टिव फोटोमीटर
तो ये था आपका पूरा इंस्ट्रूमेंट और इसमें ये प्रिज्म थे जैसे कि आपने देखा और यहाँ यहाँ से हम एडजस्टमेंट कर सकते हैं और यहाँ से आपकी रीडिंग रहेगी थैंक यू So this is all about our today's lecture. I thank you all. If you have any question, you can add add this question in your portal. You are more than welcome. Thank you.